All right, I have returned. And uh, what do we got? Oh yeah, I do a transcriber job. We should do that. We should, get, we should get going on that. We got we got maybe another hour for the stream today, so let, let's do things. Um, so things we want to do: uh, create container execution role, create a role for the ECS task, uh, task definition for the ECS task, and um, the job definition for that job. Those are the four things that we need to do here. Uh, except it's not an ECS task. Or it is an ECS task. It is, it is a EC2 uh, something. I don't know. How does that work? What do we need to do? Let's. Sometimes it's easier just to look in um, in the console and see what it requires of you. <clears throat> At least it, it definitely seems that way for Pulumi, or, or maybe it's like. How it's implemented in Python or something like coming from Cloud Development Kit and TypeScript, you can get a lot of insight about like parameters for things and how things are supposed to go together because there are types that are you know very that correspond to how the resources are actually defined in uh, well in CloudFormation but in AWS. So like if I made a job definition. Uh, if I made a job definition here, uh, I would need to select EC2 as the platform because we want a GPU. And then I don't need a job that spans multiple EC2 instances. That's fine. I wonder if I can. So. Uh, going back to the the code, right? So, like, if we look at video ingester, the container properties that we create is a JSON representation. So, I wonder if I can get at this, the right JSON representation of the properties, um, because there is a review step. So, let, let's let's see here. Um, job all those as defaults um, ECS agents permission to make AWS API custom behalf okay okay so this tells me something important here right so if uh, assuming that this is actually correct in the context of uh, an EC2 based batch job. Um, task role is still uh, using ECS IAM roles. Right, so that's something like this. These aren't the right values, but. ECM resource names will be seized for containers on job Node. I'll leave those alone. When you register a job definition, you can spell list the volumes that are passed to the Docker name and the that. Parameters. So this would be the parameters that we want to pass. So this would be like things that correspond to the arguments to our command line program. So item key, input key. Uh, do I need to specify value? Is this the right thing? Is this the thing that I'm thinking? The the thing that I'm thinking of this? Probably not, because I don't. I'm not defining those parameters here. I'm defining fans. So let's let's skip that for now. Um, do we define a container name in our parameters here? This is a job definition, not necessarily hmm, interesting. Okay, let's go back a step then. Yeah, yeah. So let's define these four things. And I think what I want to do is what I was about to do. So I'll define item key, input key, initial prompt, 
much much going back and forth here. Uh, and language. And these are just going to be like... This, I think. We'll see what we, uh, what we see when we get to the end of this. I'm not sure if we'll get any... I'm not sure what part of this, if any, will actually be exportable as JSON or visible as JSON, but we'll see. So we would be able to provide like the image path. So this would actually, this, this is one, isn't what we would want, but let's, let's just imagine. Uh, GPU to reserve one. Um, You can imagine this hands that corresponds to like this part, right? So we like this. Um, it does need to be JSON. So it would be like this. Uh, item key. Uh, other things. I have to go back and forth a few times to grab all of the uh, all of the right things. Input key, initial prompt, and language. I think is what we would want. And then uh, environment variables. We would want to populate here. All the environment variables that we need, such as uh, what did I call them? We have like a whole config thing, All right? So input bucket would be a thing, although it'd be all caps. Input bucket. Let's put X there for now. There would be more, and we can configure other things like secrets and mount points dependencies if there were multiple containers in the job. Uh, so here we go. We do see some JSON. That's me. So you can see the parts that, that correspond. What did I just do? I just went to the next tab. That's good. Um, you can see the parts that correspond to what we're doing in this definition of container properties. So there's like commands and uh, environments and image and resource requirements. And, and I guess we just skip name. So all, clearly all these things aren't required, but yeah, environments, essential. Uh, resource requirements and then outside of that is the stuff that's going into the job definition like parameters and retry strategy and type so platform capabilities is where we would put EC2 so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by copying um, all of this and then we'll trim it down and update it So, we'll allow get object on the output bucket. We are going to allow, maybe the permission is update item. We're gonna find out when we try to deploy this uh, on the metadata table. Um, we are going to, hey, Alistair. Thanks for the lurk. <laughs> Thanks for dropping by. It's been a nice chill stream, making some progress on uh, getting things deployed so that they can be run on all of my uh, 
all my recordings of my streams because I have a lot actually that are sitting around waiting to be processed. I need to do something soon actually because I only have 200 gigabytes free on this disk. Uh, to give you a sense, I can pull this over. There we go. Um, the videos that I've I've uploaded to YouTube that I've like edited and cut down and posted, um, I do go back and delete them from my local disk because they're archived in S3 as well. But what I want to do is I want to move. Um, Maybe, maybe it is at the point where if I can really move. So the idea of all of this anyway is to make it so that instead of having to have copies of all the video files locally to do the editing work and processing to get them onto YouTube, it all happens in AWS. So I can clear out all 631 video files here. Uh, you know, we got 3.3 terabytes of video. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, you know, freeing up for more videos. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Okay. So we don't need that bucket name and what we're doing here. Uh, let's see. Input bucket is where audio files are stored. Let's update the comment output buckets on a thing here. Then a move DB table is yep. Metadata is stored. This is going to be audio transcriber image tag. Yeah. So. How do I want to do this? I'm kind of. Uh, I mean, I guess it's fine. I don't like having. So, args here is just a list of these values unpacked um, in another language. I would do you know, something where I was like, OK, well, it's actually, you know, it's um, bucket name, you know, an unpack it um, or otherwise, you know, give give those things names. But it's awkward to do instead of this Lambda. I'm doing this now. I could also make a function um, so that I can name the arguments. It's fine. Just gonna have to update the numbers. So this is actually, uh, it's still, it's still zero. It's just that the output bucket, in general, is called input bucket here. And then we get rid of all these other things. Dynamo B Dynamo DB table is argument number one. We don't have any of these arguments, or. Sorry, environment variables defined. Uh, VCPU. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to make sense here. So we're just going to leave it and we're going to add GPU as well. Uh, GPU one. And then this part is going to be different. This is going to be uh, input key. Uh, not output key. Uh, let's see. I have many places where this is now a reference. Here we go. Command should be this this value. There we go. Yeah. And then execution roll arn is zero, one, two, three, three and four instead of four and five. And image is arc number two. Okay, so that gets us a the container properties for the audio transcribing job. Okay. So that seems fine. And then for the job definition. Going to be. Do we need a name? Is that required? 
It's not required. Maybe I'll just go without a name. Uh, the downside of doing that is that if I want to interact with Batch through the console, and I want to go schedule a job, I would go to a job queue, uh, not this job queue, a different job queue. Uh, or no, I would I would have to go from the job, right? So I would, uh, the job definition, there we go. Um, there's not a description field here. Right, I have the name to go off of. Maybe job definition slapped on the end of this is kind of unnecessary. It's the video ingester, right? But I need to find the name to know what it is. Um, audio transcriber seems good. Uh, parameters here. Well, we figured that out already, right? It's this set of things. Uh, platform capabilities are EC2. This is going to depend on the audio transcriber repository. Um, this doesn't have any aliases because we're not moving it from somewhere else. It's a new thing. Um, this should, let's just call this job definition. There's only one in here. See if this is uh, this task role and container role works out. I mean, honestly, we could also just rename this to the repository. that yeah we use that as a parameter here okay um is that it i think this is kind of the easy part right in terms of hooking everything up this assumes that we have a a job queue and compute environment that can run this so let's save this uh and deploy it see what I've missed. Oh, I think I wanted to go back to video ingester and rename it as well. Okay, so this adds a job definition and roles. Let's go ahead and say yes to that. And then in video ingester, I'm going to rename the name of the job definition. Just be video ingester. Deploy that after this is done. Hmm. Nope, didn't like it. It says that value 0.5 for vCPU and resource requirement is not valid. Please provide a numeric value. <laughs> Okay, so in audio transcriber job, I think there are just different requirements for this, different validation based on whether or not it's an ECS or EC2 uh, job. Fortunately, we do have an example of what this could look like. So I'm just gonna go with this. Uh, try that out. Uh, that's also going to pick up the uh, renaming of the uh, other job definition. So we have to replace it. We add the new one and we update things because we replaced the job definition. So, yeah. And 
maybe this will work. Nope. <laughs> uh, let's see. Update failed. Creating batch job definition, audio transcriber. 400. Network configuration not applicable for AC2. Okay, so that was a copy paste problem. I copied this network configuration from the other job. It's not relevant to this one. Uh, let's try this. Yes. Someday, someday it will be done. Uh, maybe if we look over here, let's see, deployments, no, updates. Overview. A minute ago, did I update 36? Oh, so you're saying as soon as I tabbed away, it finished? Yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, four changes then. Okay, so this uh, provides a place for us to push the image that we were building. If it succeeded, it did succeed. All right. So, let's see. We want to tag audio transcriber. And did I call the name of the repo audio transcriber? Who could say, uh, let's see, ECR? Or I could just look at the Lumi code, but uh, why would I do that? Wait, why is it not here? Last choice? Um, Video ingester, which has our all of our images. Which apparently, it's been what about a week? Uh, where are the other repositories? Okay, I didn't create a public one. That's good. I thought I had created a repository. Not, not a resource that I made. Ooh, graph view. Uh, so. Audio transcriber repository. I called it audio transcriber. So audit, yeah, audio transcriber. Okay. So that's really odd. It doesn't exist, right? It says it doesn't exist. I am in US West 2. It says it created it in US West 2 in uh, 7421. 7421, okay. I don't know how we would accidentally create it in a different account or a different region, but um, yeah, it thinks it exists. Open an AWS console. Nope. Okay. Well, let's try pushing to it and see what happens. Well, we tag first, uh, and then we push to audio transcriber latest. Okay, repository with the name audio transcriber does not exist in this registry. Okay. Uh, 
Um, I confused Palumi. I did delete one thing manually and somehow that confused Palumi. Um, so resources, can I tell it? Can I do anything here or does it have to be for the fan line? Graph you again. Audio transcriber, job repository, actions, have to create deployment settings for this stack. Um, such a long earn it has. State. state refresh state pairing state with pulling me refresh out of band changes this this sounds familiar uh yeah did things the solution um so what does pulumi refresh do Refresh the resources in a stack. Compare the current stack, uh, stack's resource resource state with the state known to exist in the actual cloud provider. Okay, so if I do this, uh, nope, see that over here where we're in the infrastructure directory. So this should be where it realizes that oh, that repo doesn't exist. Um. Okay, it wants to delete something. That's that's interesting. It wants to delete. Ah, right. Okay. It wants to delete this because it doesn't exist. Um, that is, it wants to delete from its internal state this ECR repository because the repository does not actually exist. So that's the one thing it wants to delete. So go ahead and do that. Uh, and this is important because without doing that, it's not going to know when I do pull me up that we've defined that repository to exist and it should create it because it doesn't exist in its state right so we're going to update uh this and then the job definition huh. i guess that means that the definition like the container properties that are embedded inside the job definition are not validated as aggressively as other things, maybe? Because it referred to a repo that didn't exist. It probably would have, would have failed. Well, it definitely would have failed if we tried to run the job, right? Because the, re the repository wouldn't have existed. Now it does. So if I go back over here and I try to push to it again. Let me push our image. That will be a minute. It's got that um, OpenAI Whisper model inside of it. Okay, so next step is to make a um, like a GPU batch job queue. I think is uh, the thing that we want to make GPU. Okay, and so this will be very similar to the Fargate one, but different. <laughs> um, definitely going to start with at least this much. But it's also going to need other different things. So, um, you, nice job, Q. We're gonna need more options besides. We're, we're still gonna need VPC and subnet IDs, I believe, but we'll need more things. Things. Um, so that's all fine. 
let's uh, have copilot rewrite. Yeah. No, that's fine. It's not, we could go on. Like the idea is that we're gonna provision some things that we're gonna need in related to EC2 stuff, I think, to make this work, but uh, it, it's fine for now. Um, I don't know that I care about compute environment name. Maybe that's true. Service. Let's take a closer look at uh, what we're actually doing here. Uh, self dot register outputs should be uh, good for right now. And I just want to have something that is, you know, runnable slash deployable here or something that's not obviously wrong. It can be not obviously wrong. And we'll find out once we try to do the deploy. Um, I wonder if this, if you look at compute environment here, is compute environment name required? No. Probably just do away with it then. have compute resources context EKS configuration service role ops resource name state tags type manage vcpus update policy okay Turns out the name is required. We might need a different role here for this. This role. In fact, almost certainly we will. If that is actually a real, let me just remove it for now. Let's see how far we can get with this. So in v.by, we're also going to provision PPU, that's job queue. Let's see, ID, yep, some IDs, uh, and then just that. go ahead and do attempt to deploy this change let's see what this looks like it's probably gonna give us some errors um, okay so oh <laughs> I was not paying attention silly uh, GPU GPU, batch job queue, is the thing that we've just made, and so we should be referring to that. Yep. Let's try that. All right, so, complaints. Uh, compute environment is missing property type somewhere. is a string sure and what does it what does it represent okay it's gonna take us to AWS stocks uh, okay so type of the compute environment EC2 spot Fargate 
Stargate spot. If you choose spot, you must specify EC2 spot fleet roll with a spot IM fleet roll parameter. It's very interesting. Um, so we can't do Fargate because that we're not going to be able to have access to GPU. I think what I want to do is I want to do spot. Um, I have, I think, I think it is a true statement that I have never used the spot instance in, in AWS. Um, so very interested in how this is going to work. So let's say spot. Probably type doesn't even need to be there. So this should probably complain that the thing that is supposed to be there isn't there. Let's find out. Okay, it just, <laughs> it's, it's probably gonna fail during the update, right? During the creation. First it has to create the roles and security groups and things that are referred to by the compute environment. How's our Dr. Push going? Still running, right? Yep, two of eight gigs. Error. Fire key type not found in compute resources. Okay, so we did need type there. Um, How, does, how is this supposed to work? Compute environment, compute resources. Okay. So this is talking about this type. So then the parents of this is what we want to look at for this outer thing. Properties. Is there is there a type property? Yes. Type of the compute environment, managed or unmanaged. So what is unmanaged referred to? I'm, I'm thinking we want managed. Yeah. Unmanaged compute environments. After you create your unmanaged compute environment, use the script compute environments API to compute the component Compute environment details. Find the ECS clusters associated with the environment. Manually launch your container instances. Okay, we don't want to do any of that. So we want managed here. Cool. Let's try that. Oh, hello. Yeah, let's do that. Still pushing? Yep. Okay. Hooray. Okay. Now it's complaining about the thing we already knew about that we need spot I am fleet roll. Now, what should that actually be? It should be probably be a role. Uh, it is a string that is the ARN of the Amazon EC2 spot fleet IAM role applied to a spot computer environment. This role is required. Yep. Uh, uh -huh. Or if the allocation strategy is specified. Let's check out. That might have been the tab I already opened. If you create a managed computer environment that uses EC2 spot fleet instances, you must create the Amazon EC2 spot fleet tagging role policy. Okay, so I think we need to create another role. Um, also, I'm going to get rid of these double uh, comment things. This, this made more sense when it was like one big long thing and we were 
kind of making sections. Uh, okay. Fine. Hold on. Let's... Spot fleet role policy. Hmm. So it's, uh, okay. That seems reasonable. Are we, I mean, this is a policy. Hold on. They... Let's, uh, let's take a look at their tutorial. So there's already. Spot fleet tagging, next permission policy. Uh, let's look at the CLI one. Right, so what we want to do is we want to create a, um, we want to actually create a role. Create a role. Yes. Fleet role and then okay so here's the assume role policy document and that's the thing that was in the tutorial right so this allows spot fleet uh, amazonabs.com to assume this role and when it assumes this role that role has a managed policy attached to it this uh, amazon ec2 spot fleet tagging role which is what they have you add here and um that should be good. And then down here, we just pass the arn of that role here. So that should let us proceed. Is it gonna be sufficient for this to work? I don't know. I feel like there were some other things that had to be solved. Um, other parameters, some other things that needed to be provisioned. We'll see what we're forced to do. Um, what we can really do is like, if this succeeds, I can just try manually running the fax job from the console. Okay. Uh, instance role is required. Okay, that was something that, uh, <laughs> that was added. Um, actually, before we proceed, I do want to go back and look at the docs here for the... Um, what's that thing is just suggested? Bid percentage? That is actually a thing. Bid percentage. This is the maximum percentage the spot instance price can be when compared with the on-demand price for that instance type before instances are launched. If your maximum percentage is 20%, the spot price must be less the 20% of the current on-demand price for that Amazon EC2 instance. You always pay the lowest market price and never more than your maximum percentage. For most use cases, we recommend leaving this field empty. Yeah. So this would allow you to say, I don't want to pay more than half of the normal price for on you know, like the, if you were just going to into, into EC2 and spin up an instance, you're paying the on-demand price. The other price is the reserve price, where you commit to like, uh, you know, a, you're gonna run this instance per year and pay for the whole year for it to be up all the time. And the spot is going the other way, where you're like, uh, I only wanna launch an instance if I have a discount. Ah, uh, okay. One sec. Go. So many bots today. Um, now what I want to do is figure out what not that, uh, instance role. I saw a 
So instance role, the Amazon ECS instance profile applied to EC2 instances in a computer environment required for EC2 instances. You can specify the short name or full ARN of an instance profile. So we need to provide an instance, um, an instance profile. That will be a thing. Won't be that though. That's a different thing. That's the service role. And then we need an instance role. Batch compute environments are populated with EC, uh, ECS container instances. They run the ECS container agent locally. The ECS container agent makes calls to various AWS API calls on your behalf. Am role and an instance profile for the container instances to use when they're launched. Otherwise, they can't create compute environments and launch container instances into it. Okay. So, does it exist? I wouldn't necessarily want it to rely on something like that existing. Um, yeah, and it doesn't. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this ECS instance role. Yep. Uh, yeah, that looks right. It's assumable by EC2 and it has this managed policy, EC2 container service for EC2 role. Um, create, and then huh. okay. Oh, this is where it attaches the policy to the role. It was just doing another thing where it's creating the instance profile as well. Uh, so we do need to do that. That's almost believable. <laughs> uh, that, that might actually work. Let's, let's give it a shot. Yeah, things like Copilot, I feel, can be really great. Um, if you're willing to, one, be wrong. <laughs> and if you, if you can review what it's doing and do something about it. Roll has no such thing as name. Um, so instance profile here is supposed to take an instance profile name, uh, and roles. Uh, so roles, huh? Except name is not a thing. It's probably Arn. Let's go back to the tutorial here. So roles was empty, but then they add role to instance profile. This does take a role name. Um, oh, there's probably, it's probably called role name. Yeah, there you go. Let's try that. Okay, so this is going to create a role, an instance profile, and then hopefully, maybe, finally, create this compute environment, which will let us have uh, 
um, run our Docker container with GPU access. Might have to do something on the container side of things. To leverage that, we'll see. How long does it take to create a role? Almost there though. Uh, I guess um, when it pip installs OpenAI Whisper, it is um, getting all of the models, I thought. No. I don't remember. I thought there was something that maybe it does. Okay, well, it's done anyway. Then with pushing the Docker image. All right, so now it's creating this it's profile. I seem to recall a thing where it was fetching the model for OpenAI Whisper when it's first run. If it's still doing that, we probably don't want to do that. Like we probably want to bake it into the um, Docker image. Min vCPUs is required. That makes sense. So that would be inside of here, probably. Uh, what is a reasonable value here? So if we go back to the docs, I'll look at all of the properties. Uh, also, allocation strategy is interesting. Um, min vCPUs. Minimum number of vCPUs that an environment should maintain, even if the compute environment is disabled. Um, it's an integer. It could just be zero, right? Can it be zero? I don't see why not. Just tear down to nothing. Nothing's happening. We're not in a rush. So you can see all the other things were created. Um, the the role and instance profile were created successfully. Was not rolled back. Instance types are required. That makes sense. What instance types? <laughs> Something with GPU. Uh, let's see, instance types. Instance types that can be launched. You can specify instance families to launch any instance type within those families. For example, C5 or P3. Or you can specify specific sizes. Um, you can select choose optimal to select instance sizes from C4, M4, and R4 instance families that match the demand of your job queues. So. Uh, C4, M4, and R4. Uh, remind me. It's R4. Okay, it's memory optimized EC2 instances. What are the different families? Probably go from EC2 pricing and we can find it. So we're going to be doing spot instances. Up to 90% discounted. Um, and then oh, interesting. so GPU instances like G in one. Uh, can we? I'm not. I'm not up to up to date on all the different C2 families. Instance types. Uh, Explorer. So we want something that has.
interesting. Uh, some kind of GPU. Let me just search for GPU. It'd be nice if like the, the code for the family was listed so I could quickly see. I mean, I, I see here G6. I, I'm not interested in Mac instances. Can we filter for like uh, Linux? Compatible processors. Uh, maybe just Intel. So we have G4DN instances. Automated speech recognition, language translation. Yeah, uh -huh. Oh, you can scroll. Okay, there we go. So NVIDIA T4 Gen Circle G. Use yada yada yada. Um, so G4DN or DL1. We're well, currently not doing uh, deep learning model training. Um, so G4DN, tell me more. search here G4 DN. so can I just do G4DN uh, in instance types Try that. Okay, what else is gonna go wrong? I don't know, let's find out. So lots of things I've never done because I, I have used AWS Batch a bit now. Uh, I've never used it with EC2 like this. I, I mean, I have spun up like GPU instances, but it's been quite a while. Um, Never through this, and I, I don't think I've ever done a spot instance either. So this will be interesting. Oh, I created. <laughs> okay, so I think uh, just to put a cap on this, let's let's very quickly go over to uh, back to job definitions. We have our audio transcriber, um, and we should be able to submit a new job. Call it test. Select our job queue. We won't select a job queue apparently. Uh, not have a job queue. Oh, I didn't make a job queue. I made the computer environment. I didn't make the job queue. <laughs> Let's see that really quick. Um, so the job queue should be really straightforward, right? I guess we're just gonna take all this, slap it on the end here, and we're just gonna say. Um, Q, uh, compute environment is compute environment. Uh, we don't have an alias because we're not inheriting some existing thing. Uh, job Q, job Q, done. Okay, so that should maybe work. Let's see if we're missing any special parameters. So now I should be able to do this here. If I go back to here and um, back to here, and refresh, should be a compatible job queue. Yep. And then next, and then no overrides right now. We have our environment variables populated. Uh, we're gonna hit next and, and um, it's just gonna def it's not gonna have real values here. We're just gonna create the job. It's not gonna it's gonna run the program. It's gonna fail, but we're gonna hopefully see that it actually successfully talks to like 
it provisions an instance, I guess. Again, have we never done this before? Maybe we can look at compute environments too and see what's going on. Uh, it's enabled. We desire four PCPUs right now. Um, we have compute resources. Um, we have subnets. We have container insights potentially. Not yet. We have it's it's runnable. I'm guessing like if we were to go over to EC2, we might see an instance spinning up. have to remove that filter um oh cloud nine okay that's old mm, i don't know there may be more to do to make this work have we never done this before no idea <laughs> um we might have logging we might have to configure some logging uh, explicitly here since we're not using um, Fargate. It is runnable. So that, that presumably is going to depend on there being an instance uh, provisioned that will do things. We have an instance role. We don't have a launch template. Maybe that's significant. So I guess I'll uh, I'll be keeping an eye on this for a bit, but I think we're we're about out of time for the stream today. There we go, ECS. Is that does that mean we can see thing what's going on from the ECS side of things? I guess that's ultimately what's managing like we have an ECS cluster here behind the scenes. There are no services or tasks yet, or infrastructure. Um, nothing going on here either. Nothing like pending. So I don't know. Remains to be seen. But yeah, all of these things should eventually show stuff happening, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, so next Monday, uh, we'll pick this up and see where things are at and maybe do some troubleshooting or I might have done some investigation be between now and then. Um, and then we'll be working on some things with step functions and coordinating logic to actually trigger these things to happen. Um, ultimately, like we're gonna have a new UI for Glowing Telegram that's gonna interact with these things that we're building in the back end. Um, so bridging that gap will be a, a future exercise as well. Um, the next stream is gonna be tomorrow evening, uh, getting back to some lot of Minecraft. Um, I don't know, we might do more Victoria 3 on Friday. Unless there are other ideas or suggestions. Uh, and uh, yeah, so let's uh, go find someone to rate. 